we begin by acknowledging that this land on which we gather has been walked for generations by the Anishinaabek peoples, the Neutrals, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and is covered by Niagara Purchase Treaty 381. We give thanks for their witness to the gospel, their history and their heritage. Well, hello, and thank you for tuning in and letting me join you. Well, this is Christmas Eve, folks, <laughs> and not exactly what we were expecting, but thanks to the help of a lot of wonderful people, we're able to um, post a, a virtual worship that you can enjoy at your leisure. And so I invite you to be comfortable and center yourself. Let all of the busyness and, and for some disappointment of the Christmas holidays this year um, settle and let them just be for the next little while while we spend some time together in the presence of God. And in order to start things off, we're going to light a candle. Today we light the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, the candle of love, and the Christ candle. We have one thing to say today. Christ has finally come. Hope, peace, joy, and love have finally come. The darkness of Advent has passed, and the light of Christmas invites us into the warm glow of the completed Advent wreath. As we light this candle, we sit in the knowing and affirming that Christ is here. Christ is now. Together, let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the birth of your Son, Christ Jesus, who demonstrates for us the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. Grant us attentive and inviting spirits to these gifts as we enter the Christmas season. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. As we have known the revelation of that light on earth, bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be fuel, burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration. It was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about the child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them, the gospel of Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Many people have told me that they saw this coming, and I suppose I did too. I feared it, I know that much. To lock down again was something that we had to know was possible. As Christmas got closer, I really did think that we would make it and be able to gather at Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Closing things down might come after that. Fine, we could deal with that. At least we would have Christmas. It wouldn't be like any Christmas we'd ever had before, but compared to the Sunday worship we've been accustomed to these past couple of months, it would have been a Christmas celebration that fits with our times. Well, one thing remains from that scenario that rings true. This is a Christmas unlike any we've ever had before. I have to tell you, it's been a mad scramble to put things together for this worship service. I'm very grateful to everyone who has contributed their time and talents to making it possible. When I wasn't sure that it was going to work, I kept telling myself that what we were doing was to the glory of God and that everything was going to be lovely. With all that we've had to endure these days, it shouldn't surprise me that this disruption comes at Christmas. It was difficult times into which Jesus was born. They lived under Roman occupation with a puppet king on the throne and a society that was always on the edge of uprising. For more than 60 years, the Romans had controlled Judea and Herod was the person Rome put in authority because he, had more, he was more loyal to them than he was to the Jewish people. The Roman philosophy for ruling a foreign land could be wrapped up in one term, syncretism. It was the idea that different cultures, philosophies, and religions could coexist under Roman rule. It basically meant that as long as people were willing to accept that Rome had supreme authority, they could go ahead and believe anything they wanted. As long as you didn't break the Roman law and you paid your taxes, it was all good. For all his accomplishments, and they were many, Herod was a horrible leader. He had raised no objection when Rome wanted to place pagan statues in the, in the temple. This infuriated the faithful Jewish community and only increased the hatred for Rome and deepened the divide between the Jew and Gentile. Herod's only concern was the safeguarding of his power. Insanely jealous, he was married 10 or 11 times and fathered 43 children. As he was growing older and his health started to fail, he suspected two of his sons were getting too ambitious to succeed him, and so he had them executed. There is one story about him and I don't know if it's true or the stuff of urban myth. Herod knew he was dying. He also knew that he was hated by a great majority of the people. The thought that there would be no one to mourn his passing bothered him. People should be saddened by the death of their king. Herod had dozens of influential people rounded up and imprisoned at Jericho. His instructions were to have those people executed as soon as it was learned that Herod was dead. He was determined that people would be sad on the day of his death, for one reason or another. This was the sort of world into which Jesus was born. But they knew he would come into difficult times. The Messiah would come to break the yoke of the oppressors, according to the prophets. Not really needed unless the people are being oppressed, and that's not a very happy thought. When I look at the prophecies from the Old Testament that speak of the one to come, it always seems to be for the purposes of curing the ills of society. The hungry need to be fed and the wounded bound 
Peace seems elusive and people are being mistreated. Of course, it was hard times that those prophets were living in. Authorities were corrupt and ignorant of God's expectations. Faith seemed to follow the wind and if it became politically expedient for a Jewish king to embrace some foreign deity, he wouldn't give faith of his ancestors a second thought. This would lead to the mistreatment of the poor, the abuse of wealth and influence, and the moral decay of society. It also weakened the nation to the point that when foreign armies came to take what they wanted, Jewish forces weren't able to mount much resistance. The people would be taken into exile and the temple would be destroyed. This is the world into which Jesus was promised. And now we celebrate Jesus' birth. Well, what of the world into which Jesus is welcomed? It would be easy to look at our immediate circumstances and tell Jesus to wave as he goes by. Maybe we'll be better suited to welcome him when it's safer. But he was promised in times of destruction, faithlessness, and exile. The people returned. The temple was rebuilt. It took time and dedication, but the faith was restored. For that matter, faith was maintained by the waters of Babylon. Yes, people prayed prayers of lament and longing, but they remembered to whom they were praying. And the prophets who foretold of the difficult times when the people would lose their way also told of how they would return. And the world into which Jesus was born? Well, there was much that divided the Jews and Gentiles, but that Jesus grew into a leader who gathered faithful followers, who taught that God does not distinguish between people the way that we do. He would not bend to the expectations that the Messiah needed to be a military leader. And faith would not be a tool that could be leveraged to wield power. In the end, all the worldly powers could do was impose their will on his mortal body. For the faithful, he had already established that he was much more than that. And their numbers were growing, and oh, how they would grow. It was into hard times that Christ was promised. It was hard times into which Jesus came. The time in which we find ourselves is exactly the time to welcome him. We put more distance between each other and invest this Christmas in the hope of being safe to gather next year. People are catching this virus and getting very, very sick, and some are not surviving it. We keep them and their loved ones in our prayers, and we give thanks for the professionals who work to keep us safe and restore the ill to wholeness. We give thanks for the clever people who have developed a vaccine, and we pray for the safe and timely production and distribution of it. We give thanks for those who lighten the burden of others. And we give thanks for the friends and family who keep up our spirits and remind us of the love that surrounds us. Over all of this, we pray for God to watch the Holy Spirit to sustain, and we welcome Jesus to bless. We do not lose our faith, and we look out for each other. As a Christmas spent under the shadow of a global pandemic, it's not like any Christmas we've ever seen. As a Christmas spent in a world in need of a Savior, it's exactly like every Christmas that ever was. Embrace every blessing this holiday season. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones and stay well. And now, as ever, God love you. Amen.
Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. On this holy night in which God joins heaven and earth, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray for the church around the world as it celebrates the birth of Christ. Bless all those who are entrusted with Christian ministry, that your word might be proclaimed with truth and courage across our world. Bestow your wisdom on all who govern, that in honoring the earth and its diverse races, cultures, and religions, we may celebrate the light of this holy night. Grant reconciliation to those besought with conflict and violence that they may live in the peace of this holy night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are cold, hungry, or alone this night. Embrace with your tender care all who wander alone or have no place to lay their head, that they may experience the hope of this holy night. Let us pray for all who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who find this season a source of pain and grief, and to all who are suffering or sick, especially those we remember now in our own hearts, that they may feel the comfort of this holy night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for parents, families, and children. Strengthen families in the bonds of love and commitment that our homes might be places of joy and peace. Let us pray for ourselves and for the blessings of Christmas. Open our hearts to your presence that we may be transformed by the new birth of this holy night. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for all our loved ones from whom we are parted this Christmas. Give us grace to entrust those who have passed before us into tender loving care, that we might join with them in singing your praises this holy night. May God grant unto us whatever we need that we might serve him in showing his love and compassion to our world allowing the light of God to illuminate the dark places with grace and truth. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored our human nature. May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hold fast to your faith, that it may move you to act with integrity and promote justice, to choose kindness and dare to love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Holy Creator, Christ and Spirit be with you and work through you among those whom you love, today and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.